I want to welcome you to the Pantheon of M. I'm your host, Ray, and today we're looking at Underworld Evolution, a 2006 movie starring uh, Kate Beckinsale and Scott Speedman, directed again by Len Wiseman. This would be his second and final appearance as a director. Uh, it's co-written by Danny McBride, a, a collaborator who is not the Danny McBride you're thinking of, the actor. He's actually a stuntman who went on board to do to help uh, Wiseman write this film and create the characters of this film. It takes place almost immediately after the events of the first one. Uh, and it kind of fills in the gaps of the idea of like lichen and werewolves and, and how it all started. So if you want to give the date of a thousand year war, it was 1202. Um, in terms of what, hmm, okay. So in terms of the invasion of vampires and, and werewolves, um, it's been going on for over a thousand years. Um, where the conflict began would say, according to this, would be uh, at the time of this period as when, oh no, it's not true, 1202. 1202, okay, how do I say this? Okay, so this is how, this is what happens. Uh, we're given a monologue. The monologue explains uh, who, were, who was the very first vampire and who was the very first werewolf. And what happened to the werewolf, and how the how those who are in contact become infected, and so they had to stop the infection cold. So the introduction of the movie's first four minutes of it kind of reminds me of uh, the introduction to a Samaritan. A narration explains how, or or basically explains how they started the the main elements to the war. The war itself gets included in the first movie. Uh, the third movie starts the war. <laughs> I'm talking out loud, and as I'm saying, I realize how absurd I'm sounding. Sorry. So, um, so evolution talks about the origin, like how this all began, like who is behind the characters. Now, the the first movie tells you Michael Corbin, the doctor, he gets infected. Um, he has a certain type of uh, legacy uh, viral strand, a legacy bloodline, and. He has his legacy bloodline, and in his bloodline, uh, he can survive a vampire bite, and he can survive a werewolf bite. And it's in some chance, if they were able to mesh, he could be a hybrid. So, this is this is what deposited to you in the first film. Now, who the bloodline comes from and how that works is actually explained here. So, the part of the, of the film that didn't go deep was like, okay, so why is he special? Where does this come from? What started us off? Who, what started the first vampire? What started the first uh, werewolf? Why are they immortal? Why do they survive all these years? All of that is actually answered in this movie. So, so questions that I never had to ask or wanted to ask, I was now informed. And that uh, was very much uh, a pleasing aesthetic to the story. It's still a story between Michael and and Celine, and it's a story of uh, trying to figure out uh, what the, where to go next now that the lies, secrets and lies have been revealed. And this is now we're dealing with the catastrophic effects of that. The, one of the questions that's given to you too is that, well, if this war between vampires and vamp and, and, and uh, vampires and lichen and werewolves have been going on for a thousand years, how come no one knows about this? Like, who's cleaning up after all this? Because obviously, um, vampires have to stay in the, can't stay in the sun, and werewolves really change at night. Or, 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 and if so, where are the bodies? If this, if this is a war. Where are all the bodies being kept? And, and, and evidence of this ongoing feud that gets answered in this movie too. And it's surprisingly how uh, thought, well thought out this actual story is. Uh, I give this. I was very impressed with this movie. I thought the story itself is what kept me glued on uh i thought uh michael speedman uh, sorry, uh scott scott speedman in this movie uh really stepped up to his game when he got into get emotionally invested to this and and going through his, his personal storylines i thought that was really really well done uh celine plays it straight uh the villains um who's now uh, marcus and uh and his brother his twin brother uh William, I you know what it's it's really well done. And this so there is a, a clicking a clock 
to get to the finale. Uh, you, you got an almost unstoppable um, antagonist, if you will. In the trailer, you see Marcus. He's so powerful, he's actually knocking the, the uh, a Jeep, a running Jeep on its side. He's so powerful. And he's taking bullet shots, like direct shots into the face and head and still coming at you. So if there is a Jeepers Creepers feel in one sequence, uh, which is really impressive. Um, and uh, there are things that they do to really keep the audience uh, engaged. Now, unlike the first movie, which was shot in Romania and Transylvania and Hungary, this film was shot in Canada, most likely for budget. The budget was between 45 to $50 million, so the budget was a lot higher, almost twice the amount of the first one. It made double, it was $111 million plus dollars back worldwide. The first one tells you what started the war. This generates the idea of like what perpetuates the war and why they are, are, why they are the way they are. J January tends to be the, the month in which they release these movies. It's sort, of like, it's sort of like the idea is that they know, meaning theaters know or the production companies know or, or the studios know that certain films that have, have been made may not stand a chance to do well in the summer blockbuster time. So this movie is a blockbuster type of film, but it would really thrive if it was delivered outside of the competition where they would have weekly events of screenings and uh, debuts like the Avengers movies or phase three at the time. So giving you that, 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 that sweet spot of showing something without too much competition. So the movie came out at a time where its competition was broke back mountain glory road, which is like a basketball movie. Uh, the last holiday, which was a queen Latifah movie and hoodwink, which was an amazing um, zeitgeist cartoon of it opened up at number one and maintained number one in the box office for a couple of weeks. This movie came out in 06, so True Blood was already just now hitting uh, HBO. Um, the book for um, Twilight has been released. Uh, they're going into the second or third book at this point now. Uh, they're really pumping out the uh, the novelizations for Twilight. But this had uh, Kate Beckinsale, and it was it was a movie that really you know catered to the, to the audience. Buffy the Vampire Slayer ceases to exist, and there were, at the time the the genre right now was starting to come back alive into the. Uh, villains or in terms of the vampires in, in the werewolf story so there you go so with that i'm your host ray we'll talk to you later